welcome back to the workshop in today's episode. We're working with Master Bladesmith Jordan Lamote. Jordan, how you doing? Doing great, Will. Good, good. Good to be here. Jordan was here two years ago, and we made up some chef's knives in a one-day chef's knife making challenge. And then after that, I went and visited him in India, where he was studying antique Indian weapons and gold inlay and all sorts of very fun things. Well, gold overlay, I suppose. And so we've just come back from Blade Show in Atlanta. Uh, it, went, it was a great show, had a lot of fun, sold some pieces, uh, won an award for the marshmallow roasting fork. That was a great time. Uh, and now we're back here for about a week, hanging out, and I think we want to do a little bit of camping, and it's really hard to go camping if you don't have a camping knife. Sure thing. Mm -hmm. So the plan is we want to build the ultimate camp knife. Jordan is obviously a very accomplished bladesmith. I work in my garage for fun, and I think together we'll be able to make a nice knife. So the plan is we're going to design two different knives of what we think is going to be the perfect camp knife. Uh, the different tasks that we want it to do is just everything in the camp itself. And then we will explain to you why we designed our knives the way that we did, and then we will combine them to make the Le Stelter, Le Le Lamb Stelter. Lamb Stelter. The Stelt the Stel Moat. <laughs> the Stel Moat Camp Knife. Today's episode is sponsored by AG1. In the past, I've had friends that have bottles and bottles and bottles of different vitamins and minerals and different superfoods that they're taking. It was too much for me to try and wrap my head around, and so I never actually did it. I never, uh, never got that healthy. Fortunately, AG1 makes all of that very simple. It has 75 different vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, and antigens. I don't actually know what an antigen is, but it tastes good. AG1 makes all of those healthy things very easy to adapt into your daily lifestyle. Put a scoop of AG1 in your shaker bottle, you put some water in there, you shake it up, and you drink it down. It tastes very good. I've had some green drinks in the past, some things that look relatively similar to this that tasted like death. Uh, AG1 does not taste like death, it tastes very good, and it makes you feel very good as well. I personally love to take AG1 in the mornings after I do jujitsu. I like to wake up at about 4.30 or so, hop in the truck, drive on into town, do some jujitsu, get beat up, and then as I'm getting back from that, I've just had good exercise, and it is awesome to be able to drink it on my way home. Now, a neat thing about AG1 is that they are continually improving their formula and their recipe to make it better and better and better. In fact, they've had 52 different iterations since they started. So it's an incredibly holistic, easy to use, tasty, good for you daily nutritional supplement. I very highly recommend it. I really enjoy it. And if you guys are interested in checking it out, go to drinkag1.com forward slash willstelter for a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packets with your first purchase. And one more time, that is drinkag1.com forward slash Will Stelter. That link will be downstairs in the biography. And with that, let's hop back on in to working. All right, so philosophy on camp knife, as far as I'm concerned, is one, you need a decently sized blade, good for chopping, you need, two, a good way to hold on to it. And so I have this handle that's designed to be fairly tight to fit the hand comfortably. The blade is you know, fairly wide, fairly long, give uh, a good, good weight for chopping, but also hopefully will be nimble enough to do some of the more delicate tasks that you might find in a camp. Uh, so other features of this blade, integral construction, always my favorite because why not? It's the best. Actually, the main reason is that this protects the front of the handle, keeps it from chipping, and it also prevents moisture from getting in near the tang, and that's important. I also have a through tang construction with a metal butt plate, which I think is pretty important to keep the wood from splitting. Obviously, this knife is gonna be used with a lot of force and exposed to some harsh environments, so having, having a metal end cap on there to keep everything together is a good Thing. Well, my knife is pretty similar in a lot of ways. It's integral and it has a handle on it. And we have a similar width as well. I have a few different lines on mine. I've got a little bit of a swell out, not quite a harpoon clip, but it just widens out. And that was to give a little bit of room to uh, a little bit more weight farther forward on my knife because mine's probably, what, an inch and a half shorter than yours? So, two inch difference in our blade length, 
The width is, is very close. I also have an integral construction, integral bolster. I added a little bit of a notch on mine and drew in the sharpening line or the grind line a little bit closer to the edge. The reason for that is that generally on Brute to Forge knives, I've done my edges a little bit closer, but I wanted to probably do a little bit, maybe thinner geometry on this if it's gonna handle all of the tasks. I like that yours starts a little bit farther back. And then I also have a pretty sculpted handle um, with kind of a swell out in the middle to fit your, your palm, and then a bit of a swell out on the back, not quite as much as Jordan had on his, a uh, place to catch your pinky so that knife doesn't want to slip out of your hands. So, Let's go ahead and start combining these two things. I think there are some, some features that we can uh, really do a good blend of, and then we'll probably have to choose one or another on the other ones. So sure. let's get to drawing. Sounds like a plan. Well, after a bit of collab narration, we have our combined design. The Stell Moat. The Stell Moat. We took key points from each of our designs and mix them together to make what I think came out as an absolutely beautiful looking knife. Yeah, I think you said it earlier that I feel like what we made is kind of a better design, a fuller design than either of us would have put together on our own. Very, very, very cool. I think this is actually quite a hard thing to do. We have styles that are not necessarily in tension with each other, but they're also not the same. But I think we're just far enough apart where they look different but they're also still combinable. This design, if we can get the knife to look exactly like that, you'll be able to look at it and say, oh, that knife was made by Jordan and Will. So, run down on some of the features of this here knife. Starting at the tippy top, we have kind of a similar, slightly curved false edge, very similar to the design that I have, but the edge profile is kind of a blend between the two of our knives. Yeah, so we still have this little swell here, a swell from narrower heel to wider belly, which is a Will Stelter feature, but then we also have a slightly pointier point. Yeah, which it drops down a little bit more yeah. towards the edge, which is something that is incorporated into your design. And then we have kind of that little bit of a sharpening notch on the very back at the heel of the blade, which is something that I have on mine. And it has a slightly wider uh, heel, which is something that's kind of indicative of your design. And then we have a kind of octagonal bolster, which is something that you've got drawn in there, as well as a spacer. And I literally don't know the last time I, I did a spacer on anything. I, don't, I think they look great, but the way that I normally do fit-ups, it's a lot fa faster to do them without a spacer. And that, that's a little be an interesting tension because I do spacers in everything. Sorry. Apparently Will's allergic. So we've got the flat spot from, from Jordan's design leading into a ridge from my design. So yep. that's, a, that's a good blend of the two. And the handle profile is a pretty, pretty good mix of the two. It kind of is flat on the back um, towards the, the butt cap. Uh, which is something for mine, and then the, honestly the, the front profile of our handles is pretty similar. And then we've got a, a little butt cap there, which is going to be interesting to do. I haven't done a butt cap since my JS knife Bowie, and that took me a long time to get that butt cap right. We'll see how it goes. We're going to start off with 4 inches of 1086M, 1 and 3 8 inch round stock, which is a very sought after hard to find steel in the bladesmithing community and we're very going to be very very close to forging this to shape.
While Jordan is getting the bolster and tang area cleaned up and ready for a handle, I'm gonna start cutting up some of this bronze. This is the Pittman bushing from the Baudry Power Hammer. So this bronze is probably over 100 years old, which is very cool. I'm gonna chop off about a one inch wide slab here in the bandsaw. I'm just gonna pull these pieces out. They're at about 800 degrees, which is hotter than it needs to be for this bronze. And then we'll quench them in the water. All right, I'm going to go ahead and flatten down one of these pieces so we can rip it in half and have some material for our spacer. An interesting thing to note about these two pieces of bronze, I think we'd all agree that these are the same size, right? Well, Voila. Well, quick note on shop safety. I just had my first ever accident with a bandsaw. I've been using a bandsaw for about 10 years now. So, I've got enough fingers to last me until I'm 80, I think, based on that math. No, longer than that. Uh, what happened was I was cutting that piece of bronze. I, we cut most of the way through it, and then I was just parting it off. And I par was parting it off at the very end, where there's a little bit of a wider opening than there is uh, on the hydraulic feed part. That's a variable tooth pitch blade, and so it'll go from slick cutting to a little bit more aggressive cutting. And one of those more of aggressive teeth hit it and just pulled it right down and pulled my finger right on with it. So very fortunate, it's not any worse than it is. It's relatively deep. I think that my finger was bent a little bit. And so uh, it gets a little deeper right in there. And it definitely got a vein. Thankfully that vein closed up. It's very easy to get lax in the shop and not, not take things as serious as you ought to. I know I'm definitely guilty of that with certain things. So. If you guys are watching this, stay safe in the shop, please. Or don't, I'm not your mom. We decided to braise a piece of bronze onto the back of the tang we're using the same alloy that we're going to use for our butt plate and that way we'll be able to blend it out and you won't even be able to tell that there is a hidden full tang fastening system going on. Quite cool. So with the bronze piece brazed on, Jordan is cleaning up the tang while I mill out the pocket for our spacer and then get started on the rounding of the butt cap. All I have to do is adjust the angle just a little bit, give it a little bit more hook so that it's not just a straight angle. We want to have a little bit of dimension to it. I'm just going to carve out a little bit to make it a little bit tighter radius on the back than it is on the front. That's how they grow. We're at a place now where Jordan and I are able to work on two different things at the same time. Jordan working on the handle, which we're doing out of African blackwood, and I'm working on that little bronze spacer and getting it fit up to the bolster of the knife. Okay, so here is where we are at. We've got our spacer fit to our bolster, which is fit to the handle block with a slight inset fit, that fit that I normally do where I leave the back of the bolster and then kind of tap it on. So we've got a nice tight fit now. We're working on the butt cap. This plate of bronze is gonna sit on the back here. We've got our bronze tang that we brazed on there sticking out and that just makes all kinds of issues because basically we need to make sure that that thing is sitting perfectly square, dead flat on the back of the knife which is kind of rough to do. We also want to make sure that it's perfectly symmetrical and lined up with the rest of the handle, which is, uh, believe it or not, also kind of hard to do. So the first thing we do is found the center line on the butt cap, and the next thing is I made up this little paper template. This is a really easy way to make sure that things are gonna be symmetrical and clean, and then you shape it with a pair of scissors to how you want it, unfold it, that looks good, get it traced onto, in this case, the inside of our butt cap. And the reason why I did it on the inside is because that is the base fit. It's gonna be a little bit wider on the outside because it's got a, a taper to the piece. So it'll be wider on the top than it is on the bottom. So now that we've got that shape on there, what I'm gonna do is drill an indexing pin hole. So you see I've got 
my little line right here. I then took a square, brought it out to the edge, and then lined it up so that I know it's gonna be lined up with this hole because you can't just drill it in willy-nilly because if you have one piece, one pin that wants to fit up straight and one pin that wants to come off at an angle, you're gonna have some bad luck. It wants to be in the same plane that this pin is. So next step is we're gonna go over and drill an eighth inch hole for our eighth inch pin in the drill press. We'll then take a little rod that has a dimple on the top of it and get this thing lined up and press it into our wood and then we'll have an idea of where to drill, get that thing lined up and drill into our handle block. That'll then give us another place so that this butt cap won't be able to swing back and forth. It'll index into the exact same spot every single time probably. And that'll make the process of getting this butt cap fit up a thousand times easier. Once Will got the bronze butt cap fit to the handle, then I took that piece of African blackwood over to the belt grinder and started grinding it to shape with a 36 grit belt. Well, Jordan has done an excellent job shaping up this handle. It is looking very good. Good job, Jordan. You should do this for a living or something. All right. So the next couple steps is we do want to bed the tang because despite the fact that it has a pretty tight fit, it can still come apart and it can still accidentally go back together, not in the right way. So we want to eliminate that by bedding the tang. The pommel cap here, or the butt cap, it's not a pommel cap, it's a butt cap. It's a butt cap, you like it or not. Yeah. You can tell that the butt cap, uh, the ends here are coming off at the slightly wrong angle. Or I don't want to adjust the bottom where it's starting to contact, but I do want to adjust the top angle so that it matches the, the way that the handle flows into it. So, Jordan's going to get ready on getting this thing bedded up, and I'm going to adjust the angles here, and then we're going to go have some lunch while the epoxy sets. The bedding of the tang happens when you pour epoxy into the tang slot. Everything that you don't want it to stick to is covered in wax so that it is able to come apart after that glue is set, but it indexes perfectly every single time. With the handle bedded, all of the pieces of the knife are roughly shaped. All of the steps from here on out are final finishing. Little changes to dimension, rounding things off, going up the grits to make things look nicer, but nothing is drastically changing about the knife from here on forward. I think this thing's just about ready. We've had quite the trial um, trying to get this thing done. This, I think ordinarily, if either of us were to have built this knife, it would have taken probably two days, something like that. And instead it's taken four days with twice the amount of people working exactly, on it. Exactly, exactly. Twice S the amount of labor, twice the amount of time. That's Score. how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> we have this blade sandblasted. We sandblasted it, and then we hand sanded it, and then we sandblasted it again, and then we blackened it, and now it is ready to go together. So what we're gonna do is we're going to glue it up, we're gonna clamp it, we're gonna let the glue set, and then we will do the peening of the tang. Uh, and so it'll just, that, that epoxy will basically fill up all of the excess space in there and it'll make sure that absolutely no moisture can get inside. And that's the really important thing because structurally it would be just fine with the peening, but we want it to be extra just fine. All right, let's get to it. Wiping it down with a little bit of acetone so that the epoxy will stick real good. I normally do it upside down so that you have like the wall. I normally do it this way so that I can scrape it off the surface and not try yeah. to be pecking at it with the little round end. You know, that makes sense. Would you like some oil? Uh, all I do is play with bench vices all day. The next step is to texture up the butt plate with the wire wheel. Pretty sure you could pay some money and get put in a cage with a live tiger if you wanted to. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do just fine. Yeah. Yeehaw. 
Nice. It is funny that there is like a certain way that you that you kind of have to hold paper in order for it to like mm -hmm. be good. But I find that it's very easy for me to cut paper. But then when you hand a knife to someone who's never cut paper before and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> oh Wait, man. You can also do the. This can be interesting too. Oh, along the okay. along the edge. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did it. And we're actually done, and you guys didn't actually see the last part. Jordan and uh, a local buddy of mine, Maverick Murdoch, built this lovely sheath to go along with the knife so that when you put it in your pocket, it doesn't kill you. Jordan did an excellent job on this guy. It looks beautiful. Got some black edging on there, and then a lovely, uh, I don't even know what kind of leather this is. It's a ledge tan leather that I got from Nick's Boots. Is it 10 ounce? Yeah, I think we measured it 10 ounce. Yeah, nice. Thick, robust, good looking leather. Fits the knife just right. Almost like it was made for it. Very yeah. close. Yeah. Uh, we also marked up the knife. It says Stelter JS Lamote NS. Kind of puts a bit of a time stamp on, uh, on when this piece was done. And that way you won't forget who made it either. Uh, and this piece will be up for auction from Friday, June 16th until Sunday, June 18th. It's 48 hours, starting at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Friday and ending at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Sunday. Now, if you guys are interested in receiving updates about the auction, you can go up and sign up on the newsletter on my website underneath the Stelmoat Auction tab. And anybody who's subscribed to my newsletter will also get an email about all the information for the auction, where to bid. And, and, whatnot. and if you just like nice knives in general, you should also subscribe to his newsletter because Jordan makes very, very nice pieces. And that's, I think, the best way to get a hold of one, isn't it? Uh, it is the only current way to get a hold, well, except for putting on the auction, it's the only way to get a hold of my work. So, Jordan, thank you so much for coming out. Had a great time, as always. My pleasure, Will. Thanks for hosting and, and you know, spearheading this design so we could make a, make a cool knife together. But, of course. And with that, thank you to our patrons for patronizing us, and thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this episode. With that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.